All right. Well, it is the top of the hour, so we are going to go ahead and kick things off today. And, you know, as you all know, we've just been talking about it. Next week is Thanksgiving. And I just wanted to take a moment with Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. I love everything about it. I love the time that you get to spend with your family. I love all the food. I love the time to just be thankful and grateful to God for all of the wonderful things that he has given us. And so I just wanted to take a moment to express how incredibly grateful we are for you, our CMI family. You, you guys all bring, I'm looking around at all of you and I, I just see so many different talents and just innovative ideas and the passion that you all have, the passion that you bring to the work that we do together. And really, to me, it is amazing how we have really just become this incredible network navigating the ups and downs of the CMI journey side by side, even across many, many miles. And so we just feel so blessed to have such an amazing group of people to be on mission with. So with Thanksgiving approaching, I just want you all to know that we, we are thankful for you. Um, we couldn't ask for a better group of people to work with. And so thank you for who you are and for what you bring to the CMI table. You're, you're just an amazing group of people. So thank you. And we love you all very much. And today we're going to be covering the topic of supporting churches at divorce season. And we have some really great information in store on this call for you. We get to hear from Carl on best practices for supporting churches during the difficult divorce season. And we also have the privilege of hearing from Dennis Stoika on the third option and Jerry Angelo on Marriage 911. So we have lots of valuable information that's going to be packed into this one training call. And as always, there will be a dedicated Q&A session at the close of the call. So you'll be able to have the opportunity to ask any questions that you may have for any of our speakers. And I also want to let you know that we are recording this entire session and we'll be putting that up on our YouTube channel. So you'll have the opportunity to go back and watch any parts that you may have missed or want to revisit. And I will also be sharing the slide deck. I know people always want to know, can I get that slide deck? And I will be sharing that slide deck with you all in our follow-up email next week. And before we begin, though, we always want to begin with prayer. And today we have Paul Kuhn from Austin, Texas, and he's going to be leading us in prayer today. So, Paul, whenever you are ready, sir. Fine, gracious Heavenly Father, we're just thankful for this wonderful group of people and this opportunity we have just to come together and to see your work be done across as this network of people is formed. Uh, as a group of people, we thank you for touching each of our lives and our own marriages and giving us this great heart to move forward. We thank you for those that you put in our past that have inspired us and have fed us. We ask that you give us strength. We welcome you into this space with you, that it might be a time that our eyes and Hearts are open to your messages as we learn how we can care for these people at these extremely challenging points of life as they struggle with their relationships and they do, and they continue to think about their future and how we support them. So uh, may you continue to watch over us. May you protect us as we go out on this journey to serve marriages. Um, may you clear our path. May you connect us with the right people as we move forward. And we can just thank you for the blessing of this group and our time together today. We say these things in your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for praying, Paul. Appreciate that. Well, I am thrilled to have the opportunity to introduce our speaker for today's training event, Mr. Carl Caton. I know most of you know him. He is the president and founder of Marriage Initiative. And you know, um, I've really had an opportunity to get to know Carl over this last year. And one of the things that stands out to me the most about Carl is his deep appreciation for each and every one of you. It, it's like, let me just tell you, it really does run deep. I want you guys to know that Carl consistently finds inspiration in all of you. And he's always coming to our staff meetings and sharing new and 
innovative ideas from CMI teams across the country. And he, he just never hesitates to express his admiration for your collective excellence. And he's constant, constantly expressing how grateful he is to be on mission with all of you. And so I want you guys to know that if you ever feel like that Carl is your biggest <laughs> fan, I want you to rest assured that I can personally attest that you are absolutely correct. He is your biggest fan. And so it's only fitting in his introduction to emphasize the deep value that, that he places on each one of you. I know that Carl wouldn't want it any other way. And so Carl, we do want to say to you, thank you so much for being such an encouragement to really everyone that you come in contact with. And so we are ready. We're all ears and we are honored to hear from you today. <laughs> well, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, it, it is truly is an honor and, and, uh, and those things are true. I just have so much admiration for all of the good folks around uh, the country that are working to serve marriages. So we're going to talk today about helping churches at divorce season. So when we think about our training events, we kind of like to fast forward and think about what, you know, what do we need to be planning for in the months ahead? So last month we talked about how to uh, serve our communities at uh, for National Day of Prayer and uh, and following National, I'm sorry, uh, National Marriage Week, not National Day of Prayer, <laughs> National Marriage Week. And of course, what follows that is the peak of divorce season. And so we need to be thinking ahead about that, too. There's a huge opportunity to serve churches at a really significant time of need. And, uh, you know, for those of us serving church uh, marriages and communities, there's really no higher calling than to serve the local church, especially uh, at its most important time of need. But what if, what if this time of greatest need for a local church is something the church is not even aware of, <laughs> is not even aware of? That's the unique dynamic for most churches at divorce season. You know, um, there's a whole lot of terminology that uh, that we discuss when we're talking about this dynamic. There's this thing called divorce day. There's this thing called divorce season. Uh, divorce day happens in January. Divorce season is more of it uh, happens throughout several months. It peaks in March. But this is a um, uh, some content that we created to be able to explain with accuracy what Divorce Day is. And, uh, and so I'm just going to share this with you and you'll be able to have this for the slide deck. But we'd like to say that Divorce Day is known around the country as the first back to school day after the Christmas holidays. And it's reported as the busiest day of the year for first time phone calls to divorce attorneys. Actually, it's opening day for divorce season that time of the year between January and March when divorces begin, not just being uh, uh, planned, but when they start being filed and they steadily increase every month. And usually, uh, and I've seen reports from around the country, they peak in March every year because it's attached to the cultural dynamic of Thanksgiving and Christmas. And here's some, uh, I follow news about Divorce Day. Here's a few articles that have come out in popular the popular press uh, in 2021, Newsweek had an article uh, saying uh, divorce day is tomorrow. And a quote from that article said that January has consistently brought me a deluge of new clients. They're quoting a family law attorney. Or this is a uh, headline from the Worthing Herald. It says divorce day sees spike in marital problems. And a quote from that article says it's said that 25% more couples seek legal support to separate on the first Monday after the Christmas holidays known as Divorce Day. Uh, the Chicago Tribune uh, finishes a headline saying, Divorce Day brings surge in filings. And uh, a quote from that says that there is a surge on this day, which comes from people having a sense of urgency. But I want to come at this from a little bit different angle. This came from one of our colleagues, Brent Evans, who is the president of EXO Marriage. And um, and this is something that he uh, sent in an email that I'm, I'm on their email list. And uh, but I thought this was really well written, especially gives us some empathy for this time of year. He says the first business day of the new year is known as divorce day. That's because couples hold their marital problems at bay during the holidays and they wait for the first opportunity to call their lawyers. 
And he's and I think this is really important. He says, as millions gather to embrace family this Thanksgiving weekend and head into the Christmas season, it's important to remember the hardship this time of year places on marriages and families. What should be a time spent together celebrating and enjoying each other oftentimes leads to stress, conflict, and separation. So what can we do to serve churches at divorce season? A number of things. Uh, I think um, for a community initiative and for you as leaders, I think it's really helpful for to help churches embrace the reality of what is divorce season. Uh, because I think once they become aware of it, then uh, they, then it makes a lot more sense in their mind. I think it's really helpful for you as teams to do church leader training. You know, what is divorce season? What happens during that time? And what can we do to support couples? Uh, I think we can do a good job of combining some of the best in class assets that we have available to us. What are some of the assets that are available that can help these struggling couples that are in crisis? And finally, and, and maybe in the shortest uh, portion of this today, I think there's some special situations that we can enter into to serve churches. This is an opportunity uh, to serve a church that's struggling or maybe overwhelmed with couples and uh, and for us to come alongside and build a relationship by serving. Yeah, you know, um, uh, this, is, uh, this is a reality. So we're going to talk about embracing the reality here. You know, while churches care deeply about marriages, there is a clear lack of urgency, right, uh, to moving to action. <laughs> so giving church leaders insight into what is really happening with families after the holidays can, can give those leaders a gentle nudge. We need to give uh, leaders a gentle nudge to be more prepared. And why is it? It's because every church has a marriage ministry, right? Well, you say no, but they really do, right? Every church has a marriage ministry. And that marriage ministry is either reactive and unintentional, or it, in those rare cases, it's proactive and intentional. And it is the, most of the churches that are reactive and un, unintentional that get overwhelmed during uh, divorce season. Uh, almost every year I get a phone call just out of the blue from a church leader. And it usually goes like this. He'll say, hey, Carl, hey, we... Uh, We've been we've been following you guys and we've never been to any of your meetings and we really never really done anything for marriages, but we really appreciate your work. And then they'll tell me a story of how a very significant couple in the life of the church has surprised them with a divorce filing. And it's and it's so funny how often not funny, it's so interesting how often they'll finish that conversation by saying, We had no idea. Now here was a a deacon couple, a leader couple who was on the, the board of the church and that's that has announced they're filing for divorce and their pastor had no idea. It's a really common thing. And, th and that's why we have to serve church leaders with gentle persistence. <laughs> we've got to be kind and gentle, but we've got to keep pushing, right? I see Paul nodding. Uh, Paul, you do that well. So, uh, so we've got to help churches embrace the reality of what is a divorce season. But we also, this gives us an opportunity in our communities to do church leader training. And we do this in San Antonio around what we call roundtable events. I love hearing about all the events that you're doing for leader training in your cities. And you call it different things. We call it a roundtable event. But this is where you're bringing some church leaders together to help train them on some aspect of serving couples. And now, there's five things that we typically cover in, at one of our leader training events. You know, we help them learn about divorce season. What is divorce season? Uh, we help frame the problem, and we want to frame the problem around a, uh, a, a, a motivation that is natural to them. One of the most common things we address is we get this question all the time from pastors. That why isn't counseling working? You know, he'll say, we had a struggling couple. We sent them to counseling and they got a divorce. It just doesn't seem like counseling is working. They always want to know what resources are available, but we definitely want them to know how we can help them. So let's talk about the first item. In our roundtable events, we always talk about divorce season. And it's really interesting to me. And this gets into this whole world of human behavior, but human beings really remember novel ideas. And in this thing called divorce season, 
I'm amazed how it's really sticks in the minds of church leaders. And once you share them this with them, there's this kind of aha moment that they have. And they'll always say something like, oh, so that is why, you know, they'll start a sentence like, oh, now this starts to make perfect sense why we have so many couples in the January, February, March season. But it also creates a sense of urgency, you know, for church leaders to be really empathetic, for church leaders that are overwhelmed with the business of ministry and just the the deadlines of, a, of, a, of delivering a sermon every sun, Sunday, there can be a lack of urgency and explaining divorce season and what it is can can create the motivation to move people to action. I think that's key. We also want to talk about framing the problem. You know, we always talk about, you know, what's the big raw data about this in San Antonio? These are our numbers. But more than anything, we want to frame the problem around something that's important to a church leader, and that is evangelism and discipleship. And one of the things that a lot of times they just don't make the connection is uh, what's highlighted in this book. Uh, The title of this book is called Between Two Worlds. This uh, book explores the inner lives of children of divorce. And I want to quote you uh, uh, just one sentence out of this book. It says, people from divorced families are only half as likely as those from intact families to say that they attend church services frequently throughout childhood. Divorce impacts church attendance. Church attendance impacts discipleship. That's a top motivation for church leaders. So we need to bring it back to what really motivates them to action. And it is evangelism and discipleship, because that's what they're called to. Now, this is something that we, we talk about, it seems like every year. We get this question from church leaders, why doesn't counseling work? Well, it does work, but not when couples are in crisis. And we're going to talk about some Gottman research that kind of backs this up. And we use this analogy of, you know, uh, you you know, if you were in a car accident, you wouldn't call your, you know, your regular doctor and make a routine visit. You would go straight to the emergency room. And and so that's how we need to think about these couples that are in crisis. Uh, And so counseling does work. We're going to talk more about about it in just a minute. Uh, But let's talk about discernment counseling. Now we're going to get into uh, some of the best in class. Oh, wait, let me go back to another slide here I have on on counseling. This is Gottman's um, uh, quote from their website. It says, according to John Gottman, unhappy couples wait an average of six years before seeking couples counseling. This is six years of chronic conflict, resentment, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, grift, fantasies, and negative bias. And now you begin to realize, okay, counseling does work, but not when couples are that far down the road. So let's let's talk about some of the assets. Whenever we gather church leaders during divorce season, we want to talk about, you know, what are some of the assets available to them? But this is the first time I want to talk about the assets available to us in maybe an order that uh, could be maybe more logical. And uh, again, a caveat here, I'm not trained in counseling or therapy or any of this stuff, but I listen to a lot of really bright people who talk about what's really working. And it seems like there's four elements uh, of tools that can be really helpful for couples in crisis. And it seems like this is the order I hear them talking about. Number one is discernment counseling. What is it? Why is it different than traditional marital counseling's uh, intensives? What are the different intensives available to us? And why is aftercare Important. I read some research not too long ago that said that the effectiveness of intensives is about 70 to 90 percent unless there's not aftercare. And in this particular research study, it said that couples who went to an intensive but did not have any form of follow up or support actually did worse than couples not attending an intensive. That was interesting. Uh, A lot of research out there. Uh, but but how can we combine discernment, counseling, intensives, the appropriate need for aftercare, which is counseling, and marriage support? So uh, we've talked about discernment counseling here before, but just a quick reminder, it's not marriage counseling or traditional couples counseling. It's a short form of counseling that helps couples make a clear and confident decision so that they can go into something like an intensive with a greater a desire to make something important happen. 
And let's talk about for a minute these couples that are filing for divorce. This is some really interesting research that was published in Family Court Review by our good friend Bill Doherty. And he says that overall in 45% of couples, one or both partners reported holding hopes for the marriage and a possible interest in reconciliation help. So when when couples come to a church leader saying they've had it, they're finished, they're filing for divorce, one of the things that we learn from the research is that maybe not as many couples will actually uh, really want it. In fact, our friend Dr. Stephen Harris has done a lifetime of research on the divorce decision-making process. And Dr. Harris says that it's a lot more dynamic than we realize. So what are some resources from intensives? This is kind of the core of how we can serve marriages uh, during this time. These are some of the great intensives that are out there. Certainly Hope Restored. I focus on the family. They have some very ambitious goals to to grow uh, throughout the country. They just built an intensive center close to us here in San Antonio. They aspire to reach 10,000 couples a year through Hope Restored. This is a big, big player in the space. Uh, Smaller is an organization called Love Reboot. They're here in Texas. Uh, They do a different form of intensive. It's a low-cost intensive. Uh, It's not done in a retreat setting with with four-star accommodations. It's done in a local church, and you go to a hotel afterwards but you still get really good help. And one of the players that's been in this world for years is a new beginning. And this is part of Marriage Dynamics from Nashville. And then there's all sorts of private intensives and a lot of really interesting new themed intensives. There's a lot of intensives that are being built around themes like infidelity and others. And I also want to mention Marriage Team. I'm going to come back to Marriage Team in a minute because I think Marriage Team offers something uh, to those couples in crisis if uh, if there's not something else available. Um, and so this is, you know, this is the, the theory around why intensives are important, because if you were in a major car crash, you wouldn't book an appointment with your primary care doctor. You would go straight to the emergency room. And using terminology, that terminology is a, is the type of terminology that really has helped us as we talk to church leaders to kind of reframe what is an intensive? Why is it different? This sort of language helps them reframe why an intensive is is really important. Okay, now intensives have uh, some problems. Uh, Biggest problem with intensives is the cost. Uh, They can run anywhere from seven, uh, one to $7,000. I've heard as high as $10,000. They can be very expensive. That makes, uh, makes it very difficult honestly, for the vast majority of couples. Maybe there's not a location close by where you are in your community. And uh, one of the most um, one of the most significant problems is the timing. You know, when we first got started in San Antonio, we had an intensive every three months. And church leaders would tell to, tell us, they'd say, honestly, this couple can't wait three months. They're not, they're not going to be uh, together in three months. And so those are some of the problems with intensives. So I want to talk to you about alternatives to intensives. And Dennis is going to talk about the third option uh, in a little bit. I think this is a really great option uh, for communities. I think it, this should be in every community. Uh, and I know Jerry's going to talk about Marriage 911, which I'm super excited about. But here's you know a number of options that are available to uh, to all of us. This we should be doing intensives plus this. So the third option is a teach out of the box program. It can be done by lay lay people in churches. Five Days to a New Marriage is another teach out of the box. It was built around the intensive in uh, called the Hideaway Experience. They took an intensive and, and took the t- intensive leaders and they created a teach out of the box uh, program. This has been really helpful for us. Brand new to this is Marriage 911. I just got my hands on one of these. It is so well supported. One of the I think it is the best supported resource available to us. Jerry's going to talk more about it. And then I mentioned before Marriage Team, and uh, this is um, a really helpful uh, resource because it's all done online. And uh, Al Ray uh, in the Washington area leads this organization, highly respected uh, for couples that don't want to go to an intensive or where the cost is prohibitive. This is a really good alternative. Uh, And then, of course, we have Retrovi, which is French for Rediscovery. Uh, this is a Catholic ministry that's been around for decades. It's peer-to-peer. It's led by lay couples. 
a really great process has been used all over the country. And even though re-engage is not considered to be, you know, a, a resource for struggling couples, um, everybody that does re-engage says they help a lot of struggling couples. Uh, and then before I finish, I want to talk about awesome marriage. This is Dr. Kim Kimberling in Oklahoma City. Dr. Kimberling has been incredibly innovative, uh, and he's creating all sorts of different resources. I subscribe to a 90-day email uh, for couples in crisis, and I, I, I walk through every single day of that email, and I thought it was really well done. Just a free email over 90 days that gave a couple something really simple they could do every day for 90 days. I thought that was amazing, It's and it's free. What an amazing thing. And so after intensives, there needs to be aftercare. This is counseling. You guys are all familiar with this. It can be traditional counseling or some form of specialized counseling. A lot of theme-based counseling like Wives Care. This is an organization we love, Be Broken. They have a really special aftercare program for wives who've, whose husbands have been involved in infidelity or, or uh, used pornography. A lot of great resources in the aftercare and then where do we want people to go? <laughs> we want people to begin moving towards a routine of enrichment to keep that marriage strong. Top of the list, Grace Marriage. I know Jeremy's here today. Jeremy's such a great collaborator with us. I think Grace Marriage should be in every, every community in the country. Uh, certainly Reengage is right there at the top of the list as well. Adventures in Marriage, which uh, is comes out of Florida. We love adventures in marriage, the art of marriage, vertical marriage. If you if you're not aware, we're closing in on our 100th interview with content leaders from around the country. Every single one of these resources you can learn more about at the Marriage Initiative YouTube page, uh, where you can get the series is called Up Close and Personal. It allows you uh, to hear more about the the leader and the content. Uh, that they lead with. This is very different than a typical like focus on the family interview. As you know, focus interviews typically are geared for a public audience for just ordinary couples. You know, 70% of their audience, I believe I've heard is is women and 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 it does have an entertainment quality to it. Uh, it they tell a lot of stories. And I think it's wonder it's you know the best in class in the country. That's not what this is about. This is what if you wanted to use a particular resource like Reengage? This allows you to get up close and personal with the founder of that. Learn about the resource. Learn about the techniques of how you implement it, uh, and and make sure this is something that you want to roll out in your community. So, what do our roundtable events look like? This is kind of what they look like, <laughs> for at least from the outside. We get together uh, people uh, several times a year in our church leader trainings, um, uh, doing uh, a training for couples in crisis uh, for leaders of churches is so helpful. This is an example of a postcard that we mail. Um, almost always we'll do an all church postcard mailing. And you can look at some of the language on this if you want to get some ideas for pr promotional language. We call that promotional language. It's persuasive copywriting that helps you uh, get a postcard out to a church and hopefully it'll, they'll turn out. But the most important thing that happens at our round tables are the four stools. We always have four stools <laughs> because we always have a moderator and three people that we that bring different perspectives. And this was a, uh, a round table we did where we were talking about rolling out five days to a new marriage. And I was sitting right next to Sean Stover, the author of five days to a new marriage. And, uh, and next to him was a lay couple that uh, he had trained in this resource. I think we did this in 2014. And I believe that this, this lay couple has led five days to a new marriage at a retreat center every single year since that training. Uh, that's a great thing, a great way to empower people in your community. Uh, this is a more recent year. Um, this was uh, John Anderson, who was the innovator of Love Reboot and a really innovative intensive, along with uh, a counselor who specializes in discernment counseling. And this is Anna and Danny Panter. And y'all know Anna from our team. And Danny's on staff at a local church, really uh, sharp, dynamic team, Anna and Danny. Uh, and so we like to bring these three perspectives at our, at our training events. We wanna have an intensive leader because it really they we really need 
them to communicate what an intensive is about. We want to have that specialized knowledge. We certainly want to have a counselor there and we want to have a church leader or a lay couple because we want those three different perspectives. We want everyone in the room to have somebody that they can connect with and uh, and that they can really understand from. So finally, uh, before I wrap this up, there's always special situations. And this is really near and dear to my heart is that uh, every year I'll get a call from a church leader who's really struggling, uh, maybe not in his own marriage, but because they've got struggling marriages in their church, he just really needs some help. Or maybe it's an elder or a deacon couple in a church that they themselves are struggling in their marriage. And we we uh, we really want to serve with surprising generosity when a church leader reaches out to us in very significant need. And it has allowed us to build some great relationships but ultimately, we want to do this for the glory of God. And as Dennis, our, uh, our great leader here today, says, for the benefit of children. And uh, and I'm going to close with this quote. I love this quote from John McGee. He says, I think it's, this is a really appropriate for Thanksgiving season. He says, giving a kid a meal is a helpful thing, but giving a kid a family, now that would change his trajectory. So, Stephanie, I'm going to send it back to you. Thanks for letting me share about that. And I know I'm excited to hear from Dennis and Jerry. All right. Well, thank you so much for that, Carl. That was very informative and we thank you for it. All right. Well, next we have the privilege of hearing from Mr. Dennis Stoika. And as you know, Dennis is the founder and one of the funders of the CMI Fund. And, you know, he's one of the most respected leaders in the field of relationship and marriage education. And really, in large part, all of this exists because of Dennis and his amazing vision. And, you know, as I've gotten to know Dennis over this last year, I can tell you that he, Dennis might not be from Texas, but Dennis has a Texas-sized heart, and he's making a huge impact all across the United States with his amazing vision and his generous heart, and Dennis is going to present today on the third option, and Dennis, as I hand it over to you, I just want you to know how very thankful our team at Marriage Initiative and our CMI family are for you as always, we can't wait to hear from you. So whenever you're ready, Dennis. Great, thanks. Um, I'm hoping that my screen is showing key advantages to the third option. Is that right? Perfect, great. Before I do, hey, I wanna really acknowledge Carl. Carl, that was just an excellent presentation, just so full of, of content and uh, very much appreciated. And did I hear you saying that those slides would be available uh, afterwards? Yes. Uh -huh. Perfect, super. So as Carl indicated, there are some challenges with the world of, of intensives, um, one of which is the cost. Uh, another is the availability. Like Carl says, is, gee, if they're happening every three months, um, you know, you, what if you get a couple that's not ready at that time? And I kind of view troubled marriages as kind of that's under the model of drowning, person drowning out in the, in the sea, uh, whereby they, they're ready to call for help, but you need to have a resource there at the moment. And if they don't, they may kind of go under the water and they may come up a little bit later and say, well, do you have any help now? And so we need to have something for that. And, and this second, so that's one of the key advantages of the third option. That's the first bullet is that people can join literally at any time. The second is that this program can be effective even if one only one person starts participating because he's that's the second challenge you've got with intensives or many other marriage programs is well the old saying is it takes two to tangle and the number of times I've spoken with somebody who'd said yes I'm willing to do X Y Z but my spouse never will and this is something where somebody can actually start and. The other person can then join later if they're willing to. So it can be effective even if only one person starts participating. And the third is an advantage is it's a real safety net that you can cast out in the community to attract people that are struggling in their marriage. That can then be a resource. You can then send them to other resources that become available. And uh, I want to point out is that um, that I've been involved uh, at a tangential level with a couple of third option programs for, for over 10 years. Orange County, uh, California is one. And a couple months ago, we started here in Bay County. But also on the meeting, uh, we've got a couple of other people. Uh, Dave Jackson, for example, 
uh, from Friends of the Family. That organization has been running the third option for quite a while. And uh, Ken Schaefer here in Bay County is actually the person uh, running it here. So we may have a chance to direct some questions at them. So we'll see. All right. So what are, what are the characteristics of the third option? So I've listed seven different characteristics. The first, it consists of 14 skills building workshops that occur. In conjunction with the skills building workshops, there are a support group that also occurs. Both of those occur in a two-hour session. It can be offered once a week on a perpetually revolving basis. Now, I should also point out it could be offered every other week, and it could be offered on a semester model. But the ideal situation that will give you that opportunity that people can join at any time is that it is offered, if it's offered once a week, on a perpetually revolving basis, because then you really can join at any time. Um, it's effective both for troubled marriages and for couples just seeking marriage enrichment. It's seeker-friendly. What that means is that um, while it is based on scriptural principles, uh, you have an option of whether you want to include any scripture in it or not. So it can be seeker-friendly. And what I'll say, the last bullet, is in a CMI setting, it may be best if offered in a non-church location. And I'll share more about that in a couple of slides, but what I mean by that. All right. I mentioned 14 skills building workshops, and these are the list of the 14. Now, you don't have to write these down because we'll give you a website where they're at. And if you want the slides, you can make them as well. I'll just highlight a few of the, the topics. They're topics that you would expect. You look at the topics, oh, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. So building a climate of respect, ending the blame game, understanding expectations, redefining the power struggle, coping with control issues, listening behind the words, beyond the words, and appreciating personality differences. So those are the first seven. You can read the other seven, um, seven another, another time. So what's the evening look like? If you look at a structure of a two-hour evening, the first hour is a sport support group discussion of, an, of the application of the previous week's topic. So that's what happens first. In the second hour is made up of two parts. The first part, part A, is a workshop on one of the 14 topics. And then the second part is a sharing couple tells their story around that topic. And as I indicate there, when a, when a person or a couple first attends their first session, they actually participate in orientation during the first hour. So if you've got a first time attendee, during the first hour, they'll attend an orientation session. In the second hour, they'll attend what we have as the second hour, a workshop on a topic. And then a sharing couple tells the story around that topic. Next week, they come back and they'll join the support group discussion. And again, the concept behind the support group discussion is you take the concepts from last week and say, okay, how did we apply those into our own marriage? So it's application oriented. So that's the structure of the evening. I want to talk about characteristics of the sharing couples because I mentioned the sharing couples is a key component of it. The idea behind a sharing company couple is somebody who will tell a story who have gone through some struggles in their marriage related to the theme of the evening, and they'll tell their story following a very specific structure. Now, because we, we with the CMI project, we want to do two things. We want to build strong marriages. We also want to build strong relationships with Jesus. And so we're really working on both types of relationships, the interpersonal relationships, that is the, the vertical, the horizontal relationship with their spouse and their family, but also the vertical relationship with, with God. And so part of the sharing couples is you want to be attracting people that have people, of, that are people of faith, so that in their stories, that can be intertwined about how faith has made a difference. They've gone through some struggles in the marriage. They're now in a reasonably healthy marriage. That doesn't mean it's a perfect marriage, but it's reasonably healthy. And they're willing to tell their story following a specific structure. They do not have to be accomplished public speakers because, in fact, we want them to read their story. The reason for reading the story is so that they stay on script and you keep within the timelines. It's um, And... In general, most sharing couples should be in their first marriage. It doesn't have to be all of them, but in general, you want to have a high percentage of their, their marriage talk. Part of the program is 
Training on how to write their talks, as well as workshopping the talks, needs to be provided as part of the organization who's putting on the program. Some additional information about the program. First of all, the website where the more information is the thirdoption.com. There is a cost to the program. <clears throat> Material cost is $350 for manual and DVDs. And we say for the manual, I want to point out, this is the manual. It's like, I don't know, four inches thick of all the material. It's got a lot of material on how to put it on. Um, other logistic is we recommend some payment that the participants have towards the cost. Um, here in Bay County, we're, we're requesting $10 per person per session. I checked uh, Friends of the Family website shortly before. I see they're requesting $5 per person per session, but it's nice to have some skin in the game. Um, I want to kind of do a realistic assessment of some of the pros and cons. Well, the pros, I've already shared some of the key advantages of the third option. The first is people can join in any time. It can be effective even if only one person starts participating. And it's a safety net to attract people struggling in their marriage. So those are some of the advantages. But I also want to point out some things to consider before launching TTO, because I don't want this to come across as a sales pitch. I don't want this to come across as like a panacea, like, you know. So there are things to consider, like where will the program be offered? Like, is it going to be? So I'll, I'll get to that in the next. And then do you have the bandwidth to set up and operate the program? What I mean by that is, you know, in, in doing these 14 skills building programs, you do need preparation time to actually put on the program. You also need time to be interfacing with churches to get them participate in it. So there is some bandwidth required. And the third is, will you offer it through one church or agency or as a community approach? And what I'm advocating within the context, so you've got two options on it. <clears throat> You could offer it through a mega church or a large agency. That's possible. But within the context of community marriage initiatives, I think the real value is if you're actually able to get a group of churches that partner together and operate it together, because now you're empowering them to actually put on a ministry for troubled marriages. <clears throat> but if you do that, the next bullet comes to play is, do you have the buy-in for participating churches if you plan to offer this as a community approach? Within the buy-in, what you need them to providing is <clears throat> some sharing couples and some participating couples. And so if you're doing it as a community approach, you want to make sure you've got the buy-in. With 2020 hindsight, I'm not, we may have launched the third option too early here in Bay County. Is <clears throat> uh, those of you that have worked with me know Dennis is kind of an impatient type of person. Dennis likes to say, go, let's just go. Um, <clears throat> and so I might have been somewhat impatient in this. I might then might have worked in our disadvantage. Uh, and so some coaching might be, gee, maybe take the time to build that consensus with, with your churches to make sure that you've got the buy-in before launching. <clears throat> Another thing to consider is how will you be recruiting participants to the program? Now, again, the more buy-in you've got from the churches, where they see it as part of their marriage ministry, they'll be referring to couples, can help address that. And the next bullet is just, will this add to or detract from your work of organizing a CMI? What I mean by that is, if you think about it, our role as a CMI is that we are empowering churches to do marriage ministries. <clears throat> And if our focus becomes too much centered on us putting on a program, then that's time it takes away from empowering church to do it. So just from a balanced standpoint. So again, my purpose on this presentation was provide some information about the program, as well as provide some balanced perspective on it. Again, I've been a supporter of the third option for over 10 years in Orange County. I've seen the impact that it makes. Um, but it's, it's also not the easiest program in the world to implement. So it does require some bandwidth. So I think I am within 60 seconds of my 10 minute allotment. So I turn my time back to you, Stephanie. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dennis, for, for sharing with us today. That was very helpful and, and very informative. And yes, I do want to let everybody know that I will be sharing both Carl and Dennis's slide decks with you today. So uh, no worries on that. Up next, and, like and, and, and during the, and during the question and answer period, um, hope we have a chance for uh, both uh, 
Maria, uh, uh, Ken Schaefer to share his perspective on it, as well as Dave Jackson to share his perspective, because they, they've been doing it there for quite a long time. Yes, ahead, of sir. course, of course, yes. All right, well, up next, we, we have Jerry Angelo, and I'd like to introduce Jerry to you. Jerry and his wife, Kate, they lead the Southwest Missouri Marriage Initiative, and Jerry is also the founder and president of Vanguard Marriage and Family Advocates in Springfield, Missouri. And Jerry is just an amazing thought leader in the marriage space. And today, today Jerry is going to be presenting on Marriage 911 through Focus on the Family. So, Jerry, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, guys. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to, to speak to you today. Um, before I get started on the focus stuff, Marriage 911, I want kind of wanted to piggyback uh, a little bit on what Carl had said earlier um, about the 45% statistic when people are entering into divorce. Um, I was speaking with a Russ Berg who has implemented the divorce intervention protocol, which might be something to look into in a future training. Um, he works with the local court systems to see if they can intervene in that divorce process. But uh, in my talks with Russ, he mentioned to me that 45% statistic, and he took it a step further, and he showed me where, it, it, I don't know if it's 10% or 10% of that 45%, um, both parties have hope to reconcile, but when you have when you have two attorneys, you know, opposing attorneys that that are pushing towards the, you know getting that divorce, sometimes that opportunity is missed. So that's something to keep in keep in mind. Forty five percent of one party may be willing, but there's ten percent of the other party that where they're both willing, and so that's something to to keep in mind when going into divorce season. And um, so I'm going to be talking today about marriage 911, and uh, hopefully it's not reversed in the camera, but here is uh, one of the uh, uh, training books from Focus on the Family, uh, and then this is the uh, training guide when you go and meet with the couples. Um, as, uh, as Dennis was saying, or I'm sorry, as Carl was saying, this is an amazing resource, and by the way, Carl, awesome job on that slide deck. There, there, everything in there is, I mean, everybody needs to make sure that they review that slide deck because if you're looking for resources to help couples, he's, he's nailed it. They're, they're all in there. Not, maybe not all of them, but there are many, many resources in there uh, and it's definitely the better ones for sure. Um, there, in, in fact, I did want to add another resource, uh, NAME, National Association of Marriage Enhancement. They've been around for over 20 years, and, um, and they are now a, a U.S. mission uh, at the Assemblies of God. Um, but they have uh, several, uh, over 100, maybe 200 locations um, in local churches where they provide resources um, for uh, struggling couples. So if a couple went to an intensive and, and Carl mentioned how important that is that they have the follow-up care. Well, this would be an excellent opportunity for people to go there to, for follow-up care. But um, I, wanted to, uh, I, wanted to read, I wanted to read something here um, about Marriage 911 in their, in their book. And by the way, um, this was a, a collaborative effort from our friends, uh, Dr. Greg Smalley, Dr. Robert Paul, uh, of course, in partnership with uh, Pastor Ted Cunningham, uh, RG and Karen Yalale of Woodland Hills Family Church in Branson. So I want, definitely wanted to, to honor them by mentioning that. Um, but uh, they talk about in the acknowledgments, the heartbeat of Marriage 911 is Hebrews 13.4. Marriage should be honored by all. And they go on to write, and we want to honor the many people who have diligently poured their blood, sweat, and tears into this project over the years. Marriage 911 is based on the learnings from their marriage intensive program, Hope Restored. So the, so the ideas and the data and the wisdom um, of this program is, uh, is over decades old, about at least 20 years old. Uh, when it was first implemented, and they have just recently completed a refresh. I mean, this is very, very new and um, just came out. So they they took all of the wisdom that they learned from Hope Restored and um, and all of the counseling sessions, and uh, and Bob and and Ted and and Greg and RG. They all came together and they refreshed their their previous version of this. So this is kind of. Uh, marriage 911 2.0, even though that's not what they're calling it, but <laughs> but marriage 911 is 
certainly a definitive guide to helping couples through crisis. And I know that many of you have served in this capacity where you're mentoring couples and you know that when you are walking a couple through a program like this, that the Lord is not only going to bless the couples that you're mentoring, but the Lord is going to bless you. And, you know, they are also these couples that you're working with, they are going to experience hope. And it also provides you an opportunity where you can encourage a crisis. And uh, there are a lot of statistics about uh, when you can when you can uh, provide or uh, or show hope in a particular situation that um, many times people will uh, be encouraged and pursue uh, instead of just giving up. So how does marriage 911 work okay well like i said this is a fresh fresh off the press here and um and so we have some of our marriage champions um they are uh, just starting or some of them are in the process of mentoring some couples and so we're just starting to use this so we don't have all of our experience yet um, in using it but what i've heard and what i've read and um, investigated um, this really is an amazing program um, it's a 16-week marriage discipleship program. The first part of it is, uh, for the first eight weeks, is like a man-to-man, woman-to-woman. And then there's an additional eight weeks where it's couple-to-couple, where they come together uh, for mentorships for a total of 16 weeks. And the first eight weeks of it is designed to help individuals become a whole creature in Christ so that they can serve in their marriage according to the Bible's direction. And so we want to get these men to a place where they're, where they're a stable creature in Christ and, and able and prepared to serve in a marriage relationship. And same thing over here with the woman to woman is they're going to be discipled in a way that they become a whole creature in Christ so that they can, um, again, serve and serve in marriage the way that God intended. And then the last eight weeks, um, it's couple to couple. So we bring the two couples together and it's designed to show them how they can work together as a couple toward to becoming one body in Christ Jesus. So we start out separate, becoming whole creatures, and then we come together as one body and we show them how that they can do that. And uh, something else that's very exciting is I was talking to Bob and Jenny and they said that they have a small group offering that's uh, very close to being released. So they're getting that polished up. Um, so that's something that, um, uh, you know, that could be another offering where, you know, maybe this, um, the original marriage 911 um, is specifically for the, for the couple, but a, uh, the small group offering, there's also benefits in having, uh, you know, like a group therapy there, you know, there's also uh, uh, great statistics on that. So that's, that's encouraging. That's coming out soon. Um, how about a strategy to implement marriage 911? Well, you know, as CMIs, you have an opportunity to minister to couples through connecting pastors and churches with this material. And um, I look at that this is just a super tool in the toolbox. Um, you know, Carl listed out a whole host of things and, and Dennis's suggestion too. The, you know, these are just tools that we're going to use in the church culture that's available. And, you know, there are different areas of of your state or nation where you are serving. The culture is different. Sometimes the, you know, your, the champions, you know, have a a bent in a particular way, but I think this is a, is a, an amazing super tool that we're going to put in our marriage toolbox um, that we need to encourage pastors to implement in their church. And in one of our uh, pastor briefings that we did uh, not too long ago, we highlighted Marriage 911. We had um, um, Bob come out and um, and he spoke on that. And um, when we highlighted Marriage 911 in one of those presentations, we actually had several people that were that were interested. And from there, we invited them to a special training with Greg Smalley and Branson. And uh, and it was awesome. It was just just because we presented this in a short amount of time, people, you know, there's such a need in our area that these couples were drawn to saying, Hey, how can we be a part of that training? And so they came down and we trained them. Um, And so that's like I mentioned earlier, that's where we are um, serving couples right now through different churches and, uh, and different mentors. So 
you know, that's a, that's an idea um, on our strategy on how you can um, get the word out on marriage 911 by, you know, your pastor briefings or talking with your, your, your leaders. Um, and so if you're interested uh, in this program, I would, I would love to, if you wanted to contact me directly and we can set up a call uh, to discuss, you know, some strategies or a little bit more in detail because we only have a few minutes really um, in this presentation. But uh, I'd love to go deep with you on this and um, give you give you more information. Um, possibly even coordinate a training in your area. Um, there's a, a, a friends of ours. Um, they're in in Wisconsin, and they are doing a leader training uh, in a couple of weeks. And, uh, and uh, believe Greg Smalley is going to go down there and, uh, and help them with that. So, you know, if you want to do a training, if you have an interest or a calling for this, um, I would love to, like I said, I would love to, uh, to help assist you with that and maybe even coordinate a trip with Greg if, if we can get a large enough group. Um, so that's definitely a possibility. There's also, uh, I believe, a, a possible pastor's discount uh, for the program. I think it's, it's like $250 or $300. Um, to get the, the materials for, uh, you know, for, for your leaders and, and for some couples. And then, um, but I believe I have a pastor's discount that I could probably share with you. I just need to double check that, um, that we haven't used that too many times, but I'm, uh, I'll check on that. Um, so let me know if this is something that interests you. I'd love to help coordinate a training for you in your area. Um, you know, this comes, from a huge legacy of marriage champions um, that that many, uh, including myself, highly respect. And uh, it's just a top quality um, information that is going to be able to help a lot of couples. And, um, and that's all I had on that, unless there are some questions out there. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jerry. We will have our Q&A session, which is we're, we're getting ready to move into that. And I, I, I do want to say thank you to all of our speakers for sharing today and for taking the time to share with us. So we'll move into our Q&A session. And the way that I want to do that is if you would just raise your virtual hand, if you have a question for Carl, Dennis, or Jerry, or if you have a comment or suggestion, doesn't have to just be questions, um, go ahead and raise your virtual hand and we'll try to get around everyone. We do understand if you have to hop off, that's totally fine. The whole entire session, including Q&A, will be uploaded to our YouTube page so you can go back and visit that. All right. Looking around for hands. And it, while we're waiting on uh, maybe a hand to be raised, um, would anyone, oh, Dennis has his hand raised. Okay, go ahead, Dennis. You are muted. I'm just going to ask, uh, maybe start with Dave Jackson and then uh, Ken to kind of share their perspective on uh on the third option. Dave, since you've been doing it longer, maybe if you go first. Sure. So we started the third option about 14 years ago. And um, I was at the time the associate pastor, the adult and family ministry pastor at a church. And kind of along Dennis's uh, description of one of the advantages of this program, its ongoing nature, one of the things that drew me to it was Every time I would do, uh, hey, this weekend we're doing a love and respect weekend and for our, our marriages and tell the community as, as broadly as we could, uh, or a, did a Sunday school class for marriage, um, every time it seems like somebody would call me up and say, oh man, my husband and I can't make it this weekend. I'm still planning the event, right? Um, I, we can't make it this weekend. When are you going to do that again? I'm like, it hasn't even happened yet. And I, I, and so every time it caught me off guard, I'm like, um, maybe next fall. And after I said that too many times, it just like w glared at me that that's not a helpful answer. <laughs> when somebody get, has the courage to reach out for, for help and, and you say maybe next fall, 
Mm. So I learned about this at one of the Smart Marriages conferences from years ago, and the Lord kind of piqued my interest in it. And but it sat on the shelf for the, one of the very reasons that Dennis mentioned. It's kind of a big commitment. Um, it's designed for weekly to rotate through these 14 topics and just starting at any time. It's just a beautiful thing. Somebody calls you up. Hey, we're, we're hitting some hard times. We need some help. Um, well, what are you doing Wednesday night? We have a workshop just for you. Right. And, or we we chose um, to do it the first and the third Wednesday nights of each month, and then on the fifth Wednesday, so odd months, uh, weeks of the month, uh, fifth Wednesday, we would do some kind of complimentary special topic thing that we would just bring in. So it was just easy to remember, odd, odd Wednesday evenings of the month, and we did it for, um, we partnered, well, yeah, we partnered with um, uh, an, uh, uh, the aquatic center, the local aquatic center who has some meeting rooms on a night that where they had some open recreation swim time. Thinking it's a safe environment for people of any belief system to come experience this great, great um, material. And if they have kids of swimming age, they could uh, send their kids swimming while they're investing in their marriages right here. So we did that for 10, 12 years until COVID hit. And then we moved to online and we just started actually this fall doing in-person again. This time we actually partnered with a church. Um, they're not, it's not their thing. It's a friends of the family thing for the community. And people are coming from 40 miles away um, to, to come uh, do this a couple times a month. And it's just over the years, so I ran it for 10 years, myself, two or three times a month. It was a total blessing to just to be with, with couples who were um, eager to make their marriages better in some way. Some of them were hitting some bumps in the road, uh, and others were, you know, we've come to realize we just need to keep investing. And so it, it was... We, we trained up, it's designed to train up leadership from people who've experienced uh, it, um, positive effects in their own relationship. And so we trained up some leaders from within and we had some couples that were interested in running it. And so now they're running it as part of the third option offerings to the community. It's been a, it's been a great thing for our community and many many relationships have been blessed. Great, thank you so much for sharing, Dave. I see that Amy Guilford has a question and Dave, this could be either for you or Dennis, either one. And this is a question on the third option. And what Amy is asking is, so the topics can be used as standalone lessons if you don't teach the whole class. This is what she's wanting to inquire about. So we actually advertise them sometimes as, hey, these are all standalone. You can come, it's an open group. So people can come, but they also flow into each other and build on each other. And even the 14th kind of flows into the first just beautifully set up. It's not designed uh, um, for, hey, let's just take this and and do this. But we've we've done that for teasers. We've taken one of the workshops, done it at this church and said, hey, if this um, stirred some interest, we're doing this twice a month over here at this other location. How would you answer that, Dennis, or uh, whoever the other person is? Yeah, I, I would say the same thing, is that it's designed to be um, offered as part of the third option thing. So Pat, the author is Pat Ennis. She wouldn't want you to say, oh, I'm going to take this material and change it around and offer my own thing. Um, but what Dave talked about, you know, offering a teaser on it, or if you're already doing the third option in its regular format, you know, offering teaser sessions, I, I would be perfectly fine. So, yeah. All right. I see Jerry, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I had a question towards, um, you know, either Dave or Dennis about the third option. 
um, it, it seems to me, it's almost like a, um, almost like a, it's not like an AA, but an AA style format where you, um, you know, meeting regularly and it's a group therapy kind of thing, uh, with a, with a guided topic. So that's very interesting because never really heard of a marriage group being like that. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's interesting to me, but my question is, um, what kind of, uh, you know, I know you've been doing this over the years, what kind of numbers are you seeing as far as attendance? And then more importantly, how many people are you utilizing to kind of manage the process? You know, a, a few, a half a dozen, like how many do you think realistically we would need to support an effort like that? And, and then a, a follow-up would be, um, what kind of uh, marketing are you doing? Are you doing PSAs? Are you just doing word of mouth at the church? What kind of, what kind of stuff like that? Dave, why don't you go first? And I'll, I'll give your perspective, then I'll add on. So it requires a team. This isn't a one-person show. Um, it requires a, a facilitator, somebody doing the presenting. It re depending on how you do it, it can require multiple people doing smaller group um, uh, support group setting in the first hour, and the way it's set up. We've often just done it with um, everybody, a discussion group um, in the first hour, because we've rarely, well, our spaces haven't really allowed for more than 25, 30 ever uh, individuals. Um, no, and, um, but, uh, but it also requires a sharing couple, an orientation couple, and some somebody on the team who can coordinate everything. So our attendance, just to hit the other one before Bill takes over here, um, our attendance, it, it fluctuates. Um, right before COVID hit, we had two different locations in in our two county area. There were were up to over twenty people in attendance each each night, and then COVID kind of sent us spinning. Yeah, and so in Orange County, California, that's been running for over 10 years, they regularly have, uh, they do it every week. Uh, they regularly do 50 and above in attendance. Uh, from size of the team, uh, because you've got 14 topics and you want people to be sh the sharing couples sharing on it, it would be boring if you only had one or two sharing topics saying, well, let me tell you a little bit about my story. They say as a minimum, you, sh you need a minimum of three sharing couples. Um, because we're running it on a weekly basis in Bay County, our goal is to get up to seven sharing couples so that we can rotate them through without burning out the team. Uh, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Oh, but I do want to say also from a clarification, yes, there is a support group part of it, but there's also the skills building workshop part. And that's kind of one of the things that makes it unique is that you're giving bo bo both. So if you think about my paradigm of vision, skills, and support, this yeah. gives both the skills in the workshop and the support. If all it was a support without the skills, it wouldn't have the impact. On the other hand, if you just had the, the skills without the support, you're not going to have the impact. So it's providing both of those legs, which makes it cool. So that is, what what about um, how you're getting the word out? How what are you utilizing there? PSAs, word of mouth, church leaders. How, in, how, in are, you, County, how are you getting people to draw to draw them in? In Orange County, they're doing quite a bit of digital yeah. advertising, plus advertising at the church where it is offered, and a lot of word the mouth. Um, uh, Kenya, I know you've had your hand up. What would you, uh, um, we'll let Dave, actually, let me, let's let Dave answer that question on advertising first, and then Ken, what you want to, whatever, what do you want to say on that? Ken, how are you doing the advertising? Dave, I think. Is okay. Dave, I'm sorry, Dave. So, um, yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm um, sorry, Dave. The word of mouth through churches, um, and, um, <clears throat> We have a counseling center here too at Friends of the Family that for many years um, I, I found as a marriage and family therapist that when I'm meeting with a couple, uh, them attending the third option totally complemented anything that we were doing in the office. And so yeah. that was just a really neat blend. So there was word of mouth, churches. We actually have it on the radio right now at a Christian radio station locally so any of those great 
social media. Yeah. Ken, what would you like to add? So, so that's where I was going to jump in. <laughs> We've done it through a variety of sources. And remember, we are just starting up, so we only have a few couples and a few individuals coming. One of the surprising things, not to get off track, but one of the surprising things is of the four individuals who have come, all four are males. So that's, that, that just seemed very surprising to us, but we have four individuals who are males who have come. But um, getting the word out. So we began this as, uh, you know, through our Bay County Marriage and Family Initiative. Uh, so we have a group of churches that are, you know, uh, that are promoting this. But it is interesting. Right away, we built a website. Um, and I think within the first week, we had somebody already begin to request, you know, hey, I need help. So we went through that. We have now built, we, um, we have now started, because of my wonderful partner here, um, the, uh, um, a Facebook page as well. And we've actually gotten likes and shares of that Facebook page quite a bit, actually, since it's only less than a week old at yeah. this point. Uh, we are only in week, we will begin week nine. We finished the first eight weeks. So understand that this is fledgling, but we are getting a lot of traction. Also, quite honestly, um, the word of mouth, yes, we bring cards and brochures everywhere we go. And we hand them out to people. We leave them in cafes. We leave them everywhere. Um, it, it's, it's simply just putting in the legwork, get the word out. And uh, Ken, uh, Jim uh, sent a, a message that says, how long does it take to raise up a team to be able to lead a TTO? It seems like it is a two-year two process. How much elapsed time was there between when I said, Ken, your project leader, make it happen, and the first class session? What was that elapsed time? The elapsed time was well less than six months. It was actually about four months, really, from when we put together five months let's say five months yeah yeah but, but that's typical it's dennis's you know ready fire aim <laughs> but i i think that six months is is doable with do the disclaimer of you may need more time to be building the consensus so if you're doing it in your own agency then yeah i think it can be done in six months if you're doing it if you're trying to build consensus of a group of churches to partner together um it's probably going to take longer to kind of build that buy-in from, from the team. All right. I see, Jim, you have your hand raised. You are muted, Jim. Uh, Dennis, do, do you involve couples that as sharing couples that have not been through the whole 14 week series. Yes. So, uh, yes. You know, cause that seems to be, for those of you who may not know, I program director at Friends of the Family, so I oversee this. And one of our things is, is that when we talk about doing a new launch someplace, it's been like I hear often, well, that's like a two year process to do that because they've got to go through the 14 weeks themselves no. and then usually they don't get it the first time through so they need to go again and then I'll, so i see you shaking your head so help me understand how you do it no actually the book the book is very clear that on your launch you you would not expect people to go through the the full 14 weeks um and honestly i just it's it's really just not required i mean the sharing couple what their story is is basically saying this is what it was like before Again, within the theme, within, you know, let's say it's respect, you know, uh, but, you know, or, or often they'll start with what in our honeymoon phase, this is what things look like. This is what we were like in this case when we were going through difficulty. This is some sort of intervention that occurred. This is what we've learned around the area, say, of respect. And uh, this is what we do now and why it's better. And so it's it's very structured uh, in, in a format thing. So it's it's. Um, also the DVDs, they've got DVDs that has the lessons on it. So it's, we would encourage somebody to view the lesson if they're doing respect, view the lesson on respect first, uh, do it, but it's really looking more, you know, retrospective in their life on it. On it. Dave, what would you like to add to what I've said? And feel free to contradict anything I've said. No, no, I was just going to add, um, 
in in evaluations, both formal and informal participants regularly point to the stories from people at the end as one of the most powerful parts to hear. I, I mean, we all know this in, in this field, right? To hear for a, a struggling person or a couple to see a real life couple in front of them who say, we really struggled with this and it looked like this and people were like, yeah. <laughs> and, and then we did this and, and God met us here and, and we really devoted this, gave this to the Lord and he really helped us grow in this. And, and now we do that. We're still not perfect, but we still just to hear this kind of testimony is like, super inspiring and helps connect people to and draw them back really for more yeah. yeah as an aside uh carl has and something that he's done and i don't know if we've done a training through the cmi yet but if we haven't carl i'm gonna i'm gonna request you to to, to get it on the calendar at some point a training on how to do your couple story workshop uh because i uh I wonder, Dave, or what my theory is that we could actually take the couple story workshop that Carl's done, and that might actually be an easier way to get people to actually write the talks than the approach that uh, you know has currently been using under the third option. Not to knock the third option approach, but I I think that the couple story workshop might expedite that. Just just a thought. All right. I see Logan, you have your hand raised. Yeah. So I'm also in Bay County and I've been helping uh, with the third option a little bit. Um, and Jerry, to answer your question about, um, you know, because since I come from a radio background and naturally marketing. Uh, so we've been doing a little bit of Christian radio and also um, Ken's wife, Maria, created a projector slide that different churches can use. And I've sent those out to some churches that aren't even in our Bay County Marriage and Family Initiative. So that's a really simple thing. If a church is open to, pr you know, promoting things outside their own ministries. Uh, and also, uh, Carl, I wanted to point out one other, um, I'm sure you know this, you just slipped your mind. Another intensive that's available is uh, Live the Life's Hope Weekend, which is offered uh, all over Florida. Um, and it's a great intensive. But, you know, I, I remember some of that used to lead one of the Hope Weekends say that, you know, like you said, Carl, it's a good, it's a good uh, landing strip, uh, but it's not a good parking lot. You know, you've got to have the follow up. So. And, and I, I would submit to you that, that, but what's nice about the third option, it can be that gathering place where you you gather people, but it, I think can also be your aftercare support. Mm -hmm. So you've gone through uh, an intensive program. Now come through the third option and and have a chance to be reinforcing what it what it is. That's really our goal here in Bay County is because we're running adventures in marriage quite frequently. And so we're kind of thinking this can be a third option can be a way that individuals can go through until they get their partner to say, and then refer them to adventures in marriage. But then couples that go through adventures in marriage, we refer, well, now go through the third option as a way to continue to invest in your marriage and reinforce the concepts that you learned. So, yeah. All right. Well, great. Does anyone else have any questions or comments that they would like to make? And you're allowed to ask questions of Carl, too, or of Jerry. Yes. You don't want to monopolize them. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess you guys were so informative that nobody has any questions today left. So before we go, though, I do want to remind you of just a couple of things. I want to remind you to be planning for National Marriage Week, which is February 7th to the 14th. And as you know, our theme this year is Love Beyond Words. And I also wanted to make you aware, in case you didn't know, that on the National Marriage Week website, there's a promotional toolkit there where you can download marketing tools for National Marriage Week. And I'll send the link to that out in our follow-up email. But you can also visit nationalmarriageweekusa.org and then click on the Marriage Week toolkit to access those and download all of those 
those um, those promotional items. And then I also wanted to let you know if you are needing assistance in any way at all with your U.S. marriage postings, you can email Carlos and he would be happy to assist you. I think most of you on this call already have Carlos's email, but if you don't, just let me know and I'd be happy to get you connected. And so thank you guys so much for being a part of today. And that concludes our training event for the day. We hope that you enjoyed it. And please know that as always, we are so honored to partner with all of you. We find it a privilege to be on mission together with you. And if there's anything at all, all we can do to support you, please reach out to me at sammy.soltmans at gmail.com. And once again, thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend and a wonderful Thanksgiving, everyone. We love you all. Goodbye.